I have been teaching about Bitmoji classrooms all year this year. So let's take it to the next level and keep it going with Bitmoji banners for Google Classroom and also Google Forms. So as you can see on my screen right now, I have a banner template slide deck and I'm gonna share it in the description below for you so you can cut and paste. It has furniture, it has posters, it has lights, it has rugs and boards and bookshelves. You can take it all, copy, paste it. It's completely yours because it wasn't made by me. It was shared with me just like I'm sharing it with you and we're paying it forward. Great teachers go ahead and they put material out there for other teachers to use because they love the fact that it's impacting students. So let's learn how to make a Bitmoji banner. The very first thing that you have to have is a Bitmoji. And if you don't know how to create a Bitmoji, right here up above me, you can click on that video. It'll walk you through how to make a Bitmoji on any cellular device. Also in this video, you're going to learn pretty much a similar process and similar tips and tricks that you may have seen in my Bitmoji classroom video. If you haven't had a chance to view that, click on the link right above me to give it a look. I'm going to show you how to use this template effectively, but then I'm also going to show you how to do it from scratch. So the very first thing that you have to do is you have to open up your own slideshow that's blank. And I'm going to get rid of any text that's here and X out of the themes. And what they give us to start off in Google Slides is the basic shape of our slide. We want to change that. So we're going to go to the upper left hand corner and click on file. We're going to scroll down to where it says page setup toward the bottom of this menu. And we do not want the widescreen 16 by 9. We actually want to choose custom. And then we're going to change the units that it's actually measured by. We're going to change it to pixels. Because in Google Classroom, you have to have 800 by 200 pixels in order for it to fit. So once you type that in, you can click on the yellow button that says apply. And now we have exactly what we want. We have that banner length. So if I go over to my template and I grab one of the backgrounds, I'm going to click on the one I want. I'm going to go with this one and I'm going to make sure that I click on it so that there's a yellow line around the outside of it. And I'm going to use control C to copy. And then I'm going to paste it into my presentation. And what you'll notice is that it will keep it the correct size. That's what's really nice. So I'm going to put, bring down that blank slide and I'm going to show you how to get an image off of the internet and then make it yourself. So I already have the correct blank pixel size for our banner. What I want to do now is I want to do a Google search for floors and walls and you can type in for Bitmoji classrooms because a lot of them will come up. So I'm going to scroll and I'm going to try to find something that's going to work for me. Uh, something like this might work right here. So I'm going to copy this image and I'm going to go back to my presentation and paste it. And what you're going to notice is that when we paste it, it's not actually going to fit inside of our template. And so we've got to make some adjustments. Um, and I see a little bit of a marking of some sort in the bottom corner. So I'm going to crop that out before I stretch this. and I grabbed on the blue there, you want to make sure that you hit that black edge and snap that in and then we'll click off of the crop shape. And what I like to do is I like to go and put it into a corner and then I can drag that blue box on the side all the way to the edge of my template and then drag it down. And there we go, it fits. So either way, it's going to work. Maybe you like something that I've already given you in the description below as a template, or maybe you want to find your own background. Okay. Now that I'm looking at these, I kind of like this one. I'm going to work off of this. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find some furniture. So again, inside of this template, if you wanted to find a piece of furniture, or if you see a piece of furniture that you actually like, you can go ahead and copy and paste it. All you have to do is click on it. You're going to 
use control C or copy, go back to your presentation and control V or paste. And then we can go ahead and put it into our room. If we don't like the way the chair is facing, it's very easy. We go to the top toolbar where it says arrange and we can rotate it and we're going to flip it horizontally. So a horizontal flip will change the direction of the chair for you, whichever direction you want it in. Okay, next I'm going to find a table because I like to place furniture and items into my room and then add my Bitmoji at the end because maybe I have a design that I want my Bitmoji pointing at or being excited about. So I want to design the room first. That's just how my mind works. So searching for a table, you can see that I've searched for table vector. Vector is a key term that you want to make sure that you use because it gives it that cartoon feel. It's not going to give you an actual table. It gives it a little bit of a cartoon feel to it. And I think I'm going to use this table that's right here and you can see that it has a white background. So this is going to bring us to the next piece that I want to teach you and it's a website that I absolutely love. It's called remove.bg. I'm going to right click and copy this image and I'm going to go to remove.bg and I'm going to use control V to paste. Is that it will take my table and it will remove the background. So the white background that was there is gone and you can kind of see there's a checkered pattern there. And what's great about remove.bg is that you have the option to download this picture to your computer or Chromebook, but you don't have to. You don't have to gum everything up or take up space. All you have to do is right click and copy the image and you are allowed to paste it now into your slideshow. And so I'm going to move and reshape this because right now it kind of looks like it's floating in the air. And I want to make sure that it's going to fit. So I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And then I'm going to widen it. I want this table to be wide because my idea is I'm a teacher of technology. I want to put some computers and some things on top of this table. So next I'm going to look for some laptop vectors, desktop vectors, maybe even a microphone. And you can see that my search for laptop vectors brought up quite a few examples. I kind of like this one. So again, I'm going to use remove.bg. I'm going to copy the image. I'm going to go back to remove. And I'm going to paste it. And you can see it takes that background away once again. And so I'm going to right click and copy the image, bring it into my presentation and paste it. And one of the things that you'll notice is that there's a lot of space that's kind of wasted that's around this, this laptop. So one of the tricks that I always tell people to do is to use the cropping tool because the picture kind of thinks that that white background is still there, but it's not. So we're going to drag this in and kind of tighten it up as close as I can. Let's try to grab that black corner that's there so we can crop it. Okay. And then I can resize it so it kind of looks like it's sitting on my table. And then we kind of want to scale it too so it's about the right size. Okay. I did this for desktop as well searched for a bunch of them. I, I kind of settled on this one. Again, I'm going to copy the image and remove the background. So I'm just going to go back to remove. I'm going to use control V after I copy it and it's going to get rid of that background for me. We're going to copy it and now repaste it. And this one's pretty tightened up already. So I'm going to resize it just a little bit and see if we can get it so it looks good on that table. And that's what's great is, you know, the more things that you put in, you may have to go back and kind of resize um, other items that you have. So my laptop right here, maybe I move it over and kind of resize it a little bit better so it fits in with the other objects that I'm putting on the desk. Make my desktop a little bit bigger. So that doesn't look too bad. Um, last thing, i will move this over just a little bit more. Last thing that I looked for was a microphone. That's something that I use all the time. So I found one that I like. Same process. I'm 
once it's done taking the background away, I'm going to copy the image. I'm going to go back to my slide, paste it, and resize. There you go. So that's a nice little setting for technology. Now, one of the other things that you can do is that you can put a personal logo in there. Maybe you have one that you use in your classroom. Maybe you just want to put your name in there as well. So those are two things that I'm going to go ahead and insert. So there's my logo, copied and pasted that on the wall. And then for text, so maybe you want to put your name in here. So I'm going to use the text box icon up above, kind of put it above my computers. And if this was your classroom, maybe you want to say that it's Mr. Parks's class or Mr. Parks's technology class, whatever you choose. You can change the font to something that's a little bit more decorative. You can make your name a little bit bigger. And we can also change the color if we want. All right, last part is we're going to put a Bitmoji of ourself in. And so if you watched my video on how to create a Bitmoji, you know that you don't have to use your school email address to create a Bitmoji. And you don't need it, you don't have to have your school email address to actually bring your Bitmoji in on Chrome. You do, however, need to have the Chrome extension for Bitmoji. If you don't have that, you can go to the Chrome store by typing in Chrome Web Store. And then you're going to search for Bitmoji. And this is what you're going to look to add. Obviously, mine says remove from Chrome because I already have it. You're just going to add to Chrome. Once you have Bitmoji and you've signed in under your account, you can click that icon that's up above. Sometimes if it's not there on your Chrome extension shelf, there's a puzzle piece here where it you may have to pin it. You can see that I have a lot of extensions that are not pinned, but I am able to pin them and use them if I want to. Bitmoji happens to be on my shelf already, so that means it's pinned in. Now, another trick with Bitmoji is that there are a lot of Bitmojis that have different graphics or words that are associated with it, and a lot of teachers don't want that in there. So if you type in, in the search bar, the word pose, you're able to get a Bitmoji that doesn't have really any of the extra wording that you don't want. And so now you just have to find one that you like, and I'm going to go with this one, so I'm going to right click on it, copy the image, go back to my slide, and then paste. And then I can resize and also crop. So that we don't have any wasted space. And that way, if I'm going to grab onto my laptop, I'm not going to grab my Bitmoji by accident. So that's not too bad as a start. Let me take this. Let me show you how to save it and then put it into a Google Classroom and then even a Google Form. So to save it, we're going to go to File and then Download, and we're going to download it as a JPEG. And this is going to go to your computer, it'll go to your Chromebook. And I haven't titled the presentation, so it actually downloaded it as Untitled Presentation. If you give this slide or this slide deck a name, it would download as that. So now let me open a classroom. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. And this is where it comes up with that generic header. And so we could select a the theme, but really what we want to do is we want to upload what we've just created. So we're going to upload a photo. And so we're going to pick it off of our computer. And it was untitled presentation. And this is where it should pop up and it is already perfectly fit because of our pixels. Our pixels were 800 by 200 and that's exactly the size that you need for your Google Classroom banner. Now, what I notice is that my name is kind of covered up because of the text that is already going to be prominent on the slide. And our banner gets faded out because Google wants their text to be what you actually see when you go into Google Classroom. So you can start to play around with this and then move it if you need to. 
So I could go back and I could fix this if I wanted to and move my name over a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna open up a new form and show you how you can also take this Bitmoji banner and use it in a form. So I'm gonna open up a blank form. At the very top, I'm gonna to go to Customize Theme. So it's a little art palette that's here. And I'm going to go down, instead of choosing a color, I'm gonna choose an image. And now I'm gonna choose Upload. And we're gonna look for it. And we're gonna pick that same photo. And what happens with my experience is it may not come up. It looks like a broken picture here, but it's okay. Just click done and give it a minute and it should load for you. And there it is. Theme colors get picked right from what we have inside of our banner. And so you can see we can change the theme if we want to, to match what our banner currently is. But the size remains the same and it comes out perfect. So think about this as spicing up any of your forms or your Google Classroom.